So for this question, we're asked to replace the loading system acting on the beam with, firstly, an equivalent force and couple system at point O, and secondly, an equivalent force acting at a distance along the x-axis from O. So we're going to look at the two different types of equivalent systems that we can make. So the equations that we're going to need to use for this are simply that the sum of the moments um, about point O is equal to the resultant about point O. We're also going to need to look at the resultant force, which we can get from these two equations, which give us the resultant in the x and y directions. So let's start with the moment. All right. And we're going to consider positive direction being anti-clockwise. So if we do a quick scan here, um, we can see that we've been given all the um, horizontal distances. So it's going to be in our interest to split up this 450 Newton force into a horizontal and a vertical part. Okay, That's going to mean that we're able to utilize these horizontal distances. And as well, we're going to have this little vertical distance in here to play with. So let's start with this one. So if we go with the vertical part, it's going to be 450 cos of the 30 degrees. That's this part here. The distance back to our point of interest um, for the line of action is going to be this 1.5 meters. Thinking about the direction, this is going to try and push clockwise about O, so it's going to be a negative. If we then think about the horizontal part of this, it's going to be 450 sine of 30. The distance back to point O for this line of action goes past here. The distance is this little one, which is 0.2 meters. And the direction that it's going to try and push about point O, it's going to go over the top of it and around. So that's going to be anti-clockwise, which is positive. All right, the next one that we have is this 200 Newton force. And this one's already um, in its x and y components. Obviously, it's only got the y component. So the line of action um, from this force back to point O is going to be the um, 3.5 meter distance in there. All right. It's also going to try and create an anti-clockwise moment about point O, which means it's going to go into the equation as positive. All right, so the only one that's left um, is this 200 Newton meter force, uh, sorry, moment. And because this one's already a moment, it doesn't need to be multiplied by a distance. It's, it's already a moment. Okay, so we just need to consider the direction. It's going to try and push clockwise. So in the equation, it needs to go in as negative 200. Okay, and it's equal to MRO. So if you go ahead and type all of this in a calculator, um, you end up with negative 39.6 Newton meters. And the negative is telling you that the resultant is in the negative direction, which is clockwise. All right. So we've worked out um, the couple that we're going to need to apply at point O. Now what we need is the force. So we can get that from our two sum of forces equations. So let's start with sum of forces in the x direction. And we know it's equal to the resultant in the x direction. So this 450 Newton force, the x component is going to be 450 sine 30. And it's pointing in the negative x direction. So it should go in as a negative value. This one here doesn't have an x component, so it doesn't need to go in the equation. This one here is a moment, not a force, so it's not going to go in the force equation. So this is equal to FRx, it's an R. And if you solve um, in the calculator, this comes out to negative 225 newtons. Again, it's come out negative, so that's telling it's going back this way. All right, so final resultant is the y direction one. So from this 450 Newton force, we're going to have a vertical component here. It's pointing downwards, so it's going to be negative, And it's the cos component. This one, it's pointing upwards, so it's going to be plus 200. Again, this is a moment, so it's not going to enter the force equation. 
So again, if we type this into a calculator, you end up with an answer um, which is negative 189.7 newtons. Again, the negative is telling us it's going downwards this time. All right, so now we just need to work on kind of drawing the um, different systems. So if we work on this first one, we're looking for an equivalent force and couple system at point O. Okay, so let's quickly draw it. All right, so we need to apply our moment that we worked out, which is 39.6 Newton meters, and it's going clockwise. So it looks like this. And we also need to apply our resultant force. Um, however, at the moment, we only have it in an X and a Y component, and it's probably going to be useful to us, to us to put it together and just get the overall magnitude and direction. So if we draw a diagram of what our resultant looks like, it's going to be 225 this way and 189.7 this way. So the overall resultant um, is the other side of the triangle. Let's call it FR. We know it's going to be a right angled triangle, so we can use Pythagoras theorem to work it out. Um, the hypotenuse length. All right. So this works out to be about 294 newtons. And if you want to include the direction as well, which you probably should, you can find it. I'm going to use 10. It's equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And it comes out to be about 40.1 degrees. All right. So we can now pop this on our diagram as well. So this is what our resultant looks like. Let's draw it in. So the length of it is 294 newtons, and this angle in here we worked out to be 40.1. So this answers part one of the question. Okay, so the second part is now we need to change this into an equivalent force acting a distance along the x-axis from point O. So we're just going to replace this moment with a distance um, over which the force is offset. So let's just scroll this down a little bit and redraw our diagram. Should be straight, but anyway. All right, so this time we apply our force at some distance. We still know this angle in here has to be 40.1 degrees, but we have an unknown which is the distance in here that we need to calculate. So in order to get it, we still know that the sum of the moments about point O has to be equal to the resultant about point O. So if we look at our um, second diagram here, moments about point O, we're gonna have a vertical component of our 294 Newton force, and you could work it out from the angle or from back here, we know that the vertical part is 189.7. This vertical part needs to be multiplied by the perpendicular distance back to O, which is our unknown D. And the vertical part of this force in here, maybe I should dot it in. Okay. So the vertical part of this force is going to create a clockwise moment about point O, so it needs to go in as negative. So on the right-hand side of the equation, it needs to be equal to MRO. And we can either take that from the diagram. So that's going to be negative 39.6, negative because it's in the clockwise direction. Or alternatively, you can scroll up and we calculated it to be negative 39.6 up here as well. All right. So the only unknown in this equation becomes D. And if you solve for it, it just works out to be about 0.21 meters okay so final answer for this one is just labeling this with 0 0.21 meters so this 294 newton force acting at a distance of 0 0.21 meters is exactly the same as having a 39.6 newton meter um, moment applied at o
So these are the answers to the question, um, these two diagrams here. That's all we've got um, for this one, and I'll see you in the next video.